Hello, this is Sam. And Rich. And today we're going to be talking about how Pokemon can be related to the real world. We are? Yes, let's do it! Firstly, just like in real life, there's a creationist origin story to Pokemon that starts with Arceus, who created the entire Sinnoh region, and possibly the rest of the Pokemon world as well. It created the Creation Trio to essentially be keepers of time, space, and antimatter. Evolutionary origin, Mew. Its DNA is said to contain the genetic codes of all Pokemon, a metaphorical way of teaching that diverse life comes from a single origin, and that Mew could be the ancestor of all Pokemon. The look of Mew supports this is a very simple design and literally looks like a fetus, the beginning of life in a way. So it may have begun with Mew, but it ended up with 718 plus forms at present. What is likely to have happened in the time between? A possible answer, divergence, examples, knockdown? Able to see in the dark, rotates its head 180 degrees, much like owls in real life. In Pokemon and in the real world, these birds have diverged to become excellent nocturnal predators. Taylor, very small and compact with a big wingspan. They migrate to other lands, flying over 180 miles a day, much like real life swallows. Any other suggestions? Certainly. Three real life bear species appear in Pokemon forms Ursaring, Beartic, and Pangora. Much like their real world counterparts, the grizzly, polar, and giant panda bears, each fit in different surroundings and yet diverge from the same ancestor. But how about differences in the same species? So, Pokemon just like us like to be able to tell apart their males and females. Birds in our world did very well, the birds of paradise being the best example. Although the females look very drab, the males have amazing colours and feathers. The females like the fanciest males, which therefore get to breed and pass on their fancy genes. Unpheasant in the Pokemon world is a great example of this, and the females are very boring looking, but the males have these wonderful pink head plumage feathers. Very fancy indeed. It's not just birds, by the way. The Pokemon Pyro has gender differences similar to the real world African lions, with manes present on the males. So we've got gender differences between the same Pokemon. How about two different species that evolved to fight each other? Well, much like the Antis in real life. As ants became more resourceful in their nest building, the Antis became more and more equipped to deal with this until we got the bizarre animal that we see today. Heatmore and Durant represent much the same thing. Durants encase themselves in steel to protect themselves. Heatmore has evolved to deal with this by its tongue being as hot as fire, which burns through the Durant's protective steel body. How about something a bit more sinister? Take Parasect, for example, with its dead eyes and huge mushrooms sprouting on its back. Pokedex says it's controlled by the mushroom. Thanks to the recent game The Last of Us, the real Cordyceps fungus is quite well known for its ability to control the minds of insects. Both the mushroom on Parasect's back and Cordyceps are entomopathogens. How about Pokemon that didn't make it, though? Well, just as we find fossils of extinct creatures in our world, you can find them in Pokemon. Obtaining an extinct Pokemon involves finding a fossil in rocks or amber and taking it to a scientific research facility to have it revived. Now, as far as we know, a species of fossil has never to date been cloned into existence in our world, but there are plenty of theories surrounding how this could be done. And it's not crazy to think that in the near future we could be seeing cloned animals from ancient DNA running around. Now onto the issue of evolution in the Pokemon world. Pokemon are known to evolve into larger shapes. In real life, evolution is the process of change in populations of a species, rather than an individual. In the Danish and Swedish translations of the game, evolution is actually development. Piplop and Empoleon, for example, like the Emperor Penguin, look very different as juvenile than an adult. They are still the same species, but one did not evolve from the other, it developed. As such, all the things mentioned provide heavy implications that evolution is a process that happens in the Pokemon world. By adding some reality to the imaginative game of Pokemon, it creates a more believable, familiar world that's entertaining and in some ways scientifically educational. 